asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. We never knew anything. When I say we, I shouldn't say we. I never heard of Cambridge Analytica until very recently. The Observer and Channel 4 and The Guardian and Carol Cadwallader introduced us to Cambridge Analytica and their former contractor, Christopher Wiley, who told us that the company retrieved data illegally from some 50 million Facebook profiles belonging to US voters. All manner of allegations has been or have been made about how they were able to use that data, not just to influence the US presidential election, but that they've been able to exploit other data to influence other elections, including the Brexit vote. Now, I've had, as usual, strong opinions on things like this, and as usual, my opinions are just my opinions. And I've expressed, I won't say disbelief, but a little bit of scepticism that even if companies like these can mine all of this data... I've expressed a bit of scepticism as how well they could use that to change people's minds about elections and one thing and another. Let's talk to an old friend of the programmes because he's a verifiable expert in these matters. He's a hypnotherapist and a mind control expert and he's also, um, a, uh, I would say, a best-selling author. His books have uh, received rave reviews over the years. We've talked about them on this programme, Your Thoughts are not your own. Welcome to Sell the Dark Art of Marketing. And the last time he was on the programme, we talked about his take, um, his re-examination, his investigation of the Manson murders. Now's the only thing that's real. Go to neilsandersmindcontrol.com. That's neilsandersmindcontrol.com to find out more about him. It's a pleasure to welcome back to the programme, Neil Sanders. Neil, welcome back. Hi, Richie. How are you? Are you well? Really well, thanks. And it was really, really good that you got in touch last week. I, I don't know whether you hear much of our output. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I I think you disagree, and that's a good thing. You think that guys guys like me particularly, we might underestimate just mm. how powerful companies like Cambridge Analytica are, and maybe guys like me do so at our peril. Am I underestimating these companies, do you think? Uh, a little, yes, um, because of the results that they they've shown. The, the thing is, Richie, like don't get me wrong. I saw your article and I, and I agreed with it, um, saying that anybody that gets their data used on Facebook basically has them, themselves to blame. Yeah. That aspect of it, I, I 100% agree. If people don't understand that social media is a data mining operation by now, uh, then you know they, they they really just need to 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 do a bit of research because that that aspect of it absolutely i i 100 agree with the thing about cambridge analytica is that there's five kind of strands to this story there's the who they actually are and what they, well, what they do uh, and what they've um, been shown to do the second point is who they're connected to which is quite terrifying when you sort of get into it um the third point is that they their operations they have an incredible similarity to things like jtrig which is gchq and various other known and admitted pentagon operations some that came out um under um edward snowden and some that were, were sort of released um through various um stings and exposes uh, 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 across the years um, the fourth aspect is who owns this company, um, what else they own, who else is connected to this person and what they're actually trying to do to, to um, influence um, opinion um, in, in other spheres. And then the fifth is the connections of Cambridge Analytica to um, the broader total control grid, which is companies like um, Palantir and Trapwire and various other uh, entities like that. Um, so, although I, I take your point about uh, the use of, of data, um, what is what this company's actually done with it? Um, I mean, essentially, Cambridge Analytica is the sort of rebranding of um, SCL. Um, Cambridge Analytica became Cambridge Analytica when a gentleman called Robert Mercer put a huge amount of money into SCL uh, and uh, decided uh, to to sort of join together. 
they're essentially a data mining uh, organization. Just to give you an idea of um, Cambridge Analytica, on the front page of their website, it says data driven behavior change. OK, mm. and they, they brag about being involved in uh, behavior alteration programs in over 100 different countries around the world. Just to give you an idea uh, of SEL, and this isn't like particularly fancy. This is just um, uh, off uh, their uh, Wikipedia. SEL's involvement in the political world has primarily been in the developing world, where it has been used by the military and politicians to study and manipulate public opinion and political will. It uses what have been called psychological operations to provide insights into thinking of the target audience. SEL claimed to be uh, to help foment coups. Uh, according to its website, SEL has influenced elections in Italy, Latvia, Ukraine, Albania, Romania, South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, Mauritius, India, Indonesia, Thailand, Taiwan, Colombia, Antigua, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, Nevis Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, you can all, uh, uh, yes, they've got on there Kenya and, uh, uh, and Nigeria. So what this is, Richie, this is a this is a private company. This is this is like a, a company that exists outside of the sphere of government. It's essentially a private intelligence contractor, like Stratfor or something like that. But it seems to be influencing elections. It boasts about overturning and bypassing democracy. Just to give you an idea of what they did in Kenya, um, Mark Turnbull, who's the, uh, uh, the director of Cambridge Analytica, said, we rebranded the entire party twice. We wrote the manifesto. We did research, analysis, messaging. I think we wrote all the speeches and we staged the whole thing. So just about every element of this camp, uh, of candidate was Cambridge Analytica. So what this company is doing is, is, is going beyond the sort of normal um utilization of um advertising to mass markets and and and, ad, and advice sort of you know public relations it's going into the, the the area where basically it says we will guarantee your candidacy if you basically go along with our manifesto now to give you an idea of the, the difference between like a normal um, uh, political campaign and one that Cambridge Analytica would do. They're also com they're caught on camera basically saying that they'll do dirty tricks, they'll basically they'll use bribery, yeah, yeah, they'll, yeah. They, they'll, you know, honey traps, they'll make people ridiculous offers and set up shell companies in order to, to um, smear them. What they tend to do is they, they basically... Uh, originally, it was said that they, they took all the data legally. Uh, and then, basically, it came out that they actually... Um, stole her quite a lot of, of the data and they they basically personalize it it's a combination of two things um micro targeting and sock puppet accounts what they would do is they'll set up a whole series of sock puppet accounts people that don't exist whole groups of people that don't exist and they will use this to surround you in the social media sphere so you'll think that you've got 20 new friends and these are all driven by ai so they actually react and can learn uh, how to how to interact um, what they do, though, is they basically they go over everything that you've, you've ever done on social media, your private data, um, your likes, your dislikes, uh, the way that you've reacted to, to different people's threads and apply um, AI algorithms to this in order to basically see what makes you tick. And then they'll, they'll find out what fears you have. They psychoanalyze you and apply military psychological warfare techniques to you in order to basically get you angry or to make you scared. Um, just to give you an idea uh, of what they oh, I've lost the quote now. Um, a Facebook like was the most potent weapon because using artificial intelligence as we did, this tells you all sorts of things about the, uh, the individual and how to convince them with what sort of advert. And you knew there would be other people in their network who liked what they liked so it could spread. The computer never stops learning and it never stops monitoring. And this was Andy Wigmore, who was chief of communications for um, Leave.eu, uh, who admitted to, um, before it was discovered that this was illegal, to hiring Cambridge Analytica with the help of aggregate IQ uh, for the, um, uh, uh, the Brexit campaign. And he said, well, that's kind of creepy. And Wigmore says, it's totally creepy. And that's why I got off Facebook. Um, what what they did, uh, what was they um, that, that, that is what they'll do is they'll, they'll, they'll use also fake news. You can remember how fake news became weaponized just before the American election and, uh, and uh, in Brexit. They will, as I say, micromanage and micro market fake stories 
that um, are, are then spread via bots, but they're spread individually to people that, that they will know that they will get a response from. One, one of the things that they did, which was absolutely uh, shown to work, was in Nigeria. Basically, they were hired by somebody, a very rich Nigerian, who didn't want President Jonathan, uh, good luck Jonathan, to, to be uh, ousted. And he certainly didn't want um, the um, uh, rival, Buhari, to get in. So basically what they did was, they, 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 it was a, a false information campaign in including a mass sort of spamming of um, uh, of um, uh, social media sites with uh, terrorist uh, and jihadist material that claimed to be in support of Buhari. And they also put around the claim that basically Sharia law uh, would be imposed directly under uh, uh, under this person. So, you know, it's your good old fashioned just, you know, lies and, and manipulation of people's fears. But as I say, what they do, what they, they, they've done in, in um, uh, the uh, English and American campaign is, is a lot more sinister, particularly when you start to realise where SCL came from, because SCL is, is an offshoot of British military intelligence. Well, just before we get into that, Neil, let me do a quick recap, because my my head is um, spinning here, and I'm not being... Um I'm not being silly when I say that. This is fascinating stuff. And you've done an, an enormous amount of research into who these people are and the people that have been around them and, and, the, and the other companies these people have worked for. And this is fascinating stuff. Neil Sanders, mindcontrol.com. Check out Neil's website. Neil is our guest uh, this evening. And we're talking about Cambridge Analytica. Now, Neil, a few minutes ago, outlined um, a great swathe of countries that Cambridge Analytica claim to have operated in. And in these countries, what's really telling about what Neil said, they approached various parties, various political organisations, and said that they would help these parties win elections so long as Cambridge Analytica had a, a lot of input into the policies of those parties thereafter. Now, Neil then described how they would go about doing this and they would use artificial intelligence programs online, having harvested the data of millions of people, sometimes legally, sometimes not legally. And these artificial intelligence programs would create profiles on social media accounts and they would then surround the real person, the real man or the real woman, and play on their psychological um, make up, play on their fears, on their hopes and aspirations. I mean, this is incredible stuff, Neil. I mean, are we talking yeah. about, are we talking about, I mean, you think they would need factories to do this with massive well, I mean, computers? Um, Go ahead. The, 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 there was an example in Macedonia called Velis where basically they set up at least seven factories where they hired local students and all they did all day was pump out fake uh, anti-Hillary Clinton uh, stories. And this place no, uh, was known locally as Trump Vale. And it wasn't clear who was paying for these people, but basically it looks pretty like it was Cambridge Analytica because it basically seemed to, to tie straight in to, to what they do. And what, <laughs> what they do is what they admitted to doing as well as setting up shell companies. Um, how they got away with it in, in Brexit, because basically they leave EU and leave and leave UK and uh, UKIP and everything massively, massively overspent. Like they spent millions and millions and millions of pounds that was that was siphoned off to uh, Cambridge Analytica. Now, the reason this didn't come out for so long is because Cambridge Analytica set up a, a shell company in Canada called Aggregate IQ. Now, for a short time, Aggregate IQ's um, phone number was listed as um, uh, Cambridge Analytica's um, Canadian office, and they say, sh shared the same server. It was owned by uh, Robert Mercer, and SEL operatives went in and installed the filing system on their computer, but they tried to pretend that they were a completely separate um, uh, entity. Now, because... Uh, all the money was siphoned to Canada and all the data was siphoned to Canada, um, the European, like, the, the uh, British Election Committee cannot look at that data. And so essentially it looks like they, they pretty much got away with, you'll never really find a, the, the, the true extent of, of what they did, other than their bragging. Because at the beginning, they, they were incredibly sort of open about it. Andy Wigmore and Brittany Kaiser and, and various other people um, um, we're, we're, we're telling people that, yeah, no, Robert Mercer got involved because basically he's a friend of, uh, of Nigel Farage and uh, this is their project. They want, to, they want to engineer Brexit. 
when uh, on American television, Steve Bannon and Robert Mercer said that basically, yes, this is why we, we, were, we were behind Brexit, because essentially we wanted to test the waters. This was vital, uh, getting the idea that a populist movement or a so-called populist movement can rise up and overturn the elites is their, their uh, sway. And that was vital for them to, to get Trump into gear. Here's the problem, right? Now, you, from being on the programme before, you have a fair idea of what my politics are. I don't have any. They're all a bunch of gangsters. The house always wins. Here's my mm -hmm. problem with all of this. And that's not just a throwaway cliche either. I don't believe we live in uh, democratic times. We don't. No. We, we, we live in fascism. Look, whatever stories they may or may not have been putting out about Hillary Clinton, many of them that have been described as fake news, not by you now, Neil, but many of them that oh, have been described as fake news, um, weren't in fake news, they were true. The Clintons are a crime dynasty yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Would, that, yeah, would, that would make, and you know that, and you've written, you've talked about this, that would rival the five families uh, in New York uh, City. Donald Trump is just another gangster. He's just a gangster yeah. wearing a different top hat and tails. Now here's where I get really cheesed off, not with you now, by the way. Yeah. The European Union is a tyranny. And yeah. however... I believe that people people went out and voted to leave and I believe a lot of people voted to leave not because they were, you know, insidious little racists but yeah. they don't like the encroaching political union they don't like the idea of a military army they don't like the fact that wages were driven down in the country and industries destroyed because cheaper labour came in now I'm not saying that these firms didn't try to use these techniques that you've brilliantly described, I'm not patronising you, brilliantly described, this is brilliant research by Neil Sanders, folks, top research here, but I'm wondering how successful were they? I believe there was a groundswell against against the European Union anyway, Neil. Back to yeah, you. absolutely right. Um, you, you, you are absolutely right. There was a groundswell. There's, there's several points, basically. Of course, people had their perfectly legitimate reasons to vote in whatever way. Though. I'm not saying that everybody that did. Yeah. It just so happens that these wealthy elites with connections to the Pentagon, um, British military intelligence, the US Marine Corps, Marconi defense systems, uh, MI5, MI6, uh, the overturned democracies all over the world. Yeah just so happen to want you to vote in that particular way as well. I've also said this before, it didn't matter whichever way you voted in Brexit and, and in the American election, it was very much like being a child going to boarding school. Doesn't matter what you want, you're going to get screwed by an older person, right? So yeah, I agree with that absolutely 100% as well. Um, I don't think that there were many options on the table. What is troubling about this <coughs> it is as I say, the people that are behind this. And just to go back to your original point, although very many people had legitimate reasons to be upset with, with Hillary Clinton or upset with um, the EU, that's, that's fine. But how many lies were put out there, like £350 million for the NHS every Plenty. single week Plenty. and stuff like that? So what yeah. you've got to wonder is... Um, how long has this been going on for? How many of these bones of contentions are actually real on either side of the debate? Um, but, but again, like, you know, that doesn't mean that people didn't have very good reasons to vote for it themselves. As I say, it's just troubling that, that a certain faction of uh, government elites wanted you to vote this way as well. It's a great point you made there. And, you know, people can't have their cake and eat it. You know, you, you've, you've brilliantly described, and the information you sent me, I spent a good bit of time today looking into it, looking for a way that I could have a go at you, Neil. But I can't because your 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 research is impeccable. I mean, some of the things this company has been involved with, I mean, some of the people involved with it, people involved with firms like Blackwater. Now, anybody ah. who listens yeah. to shows like this and who follows people like Neil and who's read Neil's books will know all about these companies. It's a veritable who's who of dark-suited underworld in terms of military intelligence figures that are involved with this and you link this firm to the coup in Ukraine as well and you've yeah. done brilliant research here Neil, it is brilliant research Well let me just sort of give you an idea of um, um, and, and this is all in the public domain like as well, I've, I've, not, yeah. I've, I've just managed to draw this together to be quite honest like um, uh, 
Right, okay, give me an idea. Um, it, it, in August 2016, uh, it was shown that the MOD had twice bought services from SEL, which is Cambridge Analytica. In 2011, the, um, the Ministry of Defence paid £40,000 to SEL for the provision of external training. In 2015, it paid 150000 for the procurement of target audience analysis. In addition to this, SEL also carries a, seri- a secret clearance as List X, contractor for the Ministry of Defence. List X basically means that they're approved to hold government information and government secrets marked as confidential and higher. So anything higher than confidential top secret, they've got the green light to hold all of that information. Um, in the US, the State Department uh, has a contract for half a million dollars with SCL, and this was to provide research and analytic, analytical support in connection with the minis- uh, mission to counter terrorist propaganda overseas. Uh, <coughs> in May 2015, SCL uh, received $1 million to support NATO operations in Eastern Europe targeting Russia. The, co- wow. uh, the company... Did- Wow. Yeah. Can I can I ask a well, quick question? Can I ask a quick question there? I'm sorry to do this, but I've got to ask you this. I watched Andrew Marr yesterday morning. You may have seen it. So you have Carol Cadwallader, who's right in the middle of this story for The Observer, and you have mm-hmm. Isabel Oakeshott. And Isabel Oakeshott is saying to Car- Carol Cadwallader, basically this is all foot, foot, footsteps in the night and whispers in the wind. You don't have any evidence, Carol. And I've read the Carol Cadwallader articles... Why do why does the Carol Cadwallader articles not have the information that you found? She's actually censoring herself or her editor at the Observer and the Guardian is not allowing her basically lay out what you're laying out to me tonight. Yeah, I, I think that no nobody's made the connection to to, to the wow. um, uh, broader um, military intelligence things. Only only in a couple of very very small publications. I mean, obviously, I found it out from 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 other places, but um, yeah, they're they're not they're not exposing this for. This is the point. I I don't. I, I, this is why I wasn't surprised that you thought this is a bit nonsense. It was only when I started looking at this like a while ago and going, who are they connected to and who runs this? It's like. My God, that's incredible, because the point is that basically for for a company like this to operate with the connections that it's got, there's no way that the people in control aren't aware of what's going off and that a certain swathe of them aren't for this. Yeah. Which which raises all sorts of really really troubling questions. I mean, I, again, I'm not pro EU per se. I've seen all the documentaries. I understand the arguments against it. Like, um, so that's not my point. But it's just like you know, if someone's selling you a pig in a poke, it's like, hang on. Like, we need to sort of maturely look at this and go. Maybe both options are rubbish. Well, do you know what? Um, on that point, we're getting tweeted to be Jesus, and um, that's no surprise. Faisal asks a brilliant question. In fact, I was going to jump in there and say this myself, but Faisal got there ahead of me. He says, Richie, ironically enough, the antics of Cambridge Analytica in support of Brexit would have done a bit to balance the overall documented mainstream bias for the Remain campaign. And of course, we learned the BBC were putting two and a half times more Remain contributors on programmes than, than, than Brexiteers. So that's a good point, right? Well, it's very interesting, but again, it raises all sorts of questions again, because, I mean, I get the impression that there's a rift, that there's two, at least two elements sort of behind the scenes, and there's a rift, and I think that this is this was an attempted consolidation of power by certain people that were, were, were connected to Robert Mercer, who is an incredibly right-wing uh, billionaire, and also to a guy called William Regnery. Just to sort of go on, just because this is important, uh, the other connections. Uh, but, <coughs> um, in um, uh, July 7, uh, 2017, um, Cambridge Analytica said that his methods have been approved by the UK Ministry of Defence, the UK State Department, uh, NATO, uh, and NATO, and all uh, of their logos were carried on its website. Um uh, Mark Turnbull uh, basically boasted that the campaign had success via a measurable behavioural change in over 100 campaigns in Europe, North and South America, Asia, Africa and the Caribbean. Now, Turnbull used to work for Bell Pottinger uh, and Bell Pottinger is the people that were making the PR, uh, the um, uh, the fake Al-Qaeda videos that was never properly explained and, and, and was very, very, very shifty. Um, the firm used to be headed up by Nigel Oakes, who is rumoured to be an MI5 
uh, Spy. Uh, in 1992, he, Oakes described his work as using the same uh, techniques as Aristotle and Hitler. We appeal to people on an emotional level to get them to agree on a functional level. The president of SEL is Sir Geoffrey Patty, former Conservative MP and Defence Minister in Margaret Thatcher's government. He also has connections with Terrington Management, uh, which lists BAE Systems and Lockheed Martin among its clients. Um, one of the company's directors is wine millionaire and former British, British Special Forces officer in Borneo and Kenya, Roger Gabb, who in uh, 2006 donated 500000 to the Conservative Party. Um, the links uh, to the Conservative Party continue to the company's chairman and venture capitalist Julian Wheatland, who also happens to be the chairman of Oxfordshire's Conservative uh, Association. The organisation has been funded by Jonathan Marland, who's the former Conservative Party treasurer. Uh, property tycoon and uh, Conservative Party donor Vincent Tegunzi was uh, the single largest SEL shareholder for a decade. Meanwhile, another director is Gavin McKinnell, who is the founder of counterterrorism Eden Intelligence Firm. And previous board members have included Sir James Allen Mitchell, the former Prime, uh, Prime Minister of uh, the British Colony St. Vincent, um, uh, who was a former Privy Counsel for the Queen. Um, and uh, Rear Admiral John uh, Tolhurst was also on the board, and he's an aide de camp to the Queen. So the point is that this is an establishment organisation, yeah, right? No this, doubt this about it. No doubt do you know about what I mean? it. Let me let, let me let me re remind folks. Go to Neil Sanders Mindcontrol dot com, uh, the author and hypnotherapist and certifiable expert in mind control. Neil Sanders is our guest today. We're talking about Cambridge Analytica. Neil's done some brilliant research on who this company is and namely who works for and works around this company. And it is a veritable who's who of establishment figures politically and intelligence services. Quite incredible. Neil, I want to pick up two points. It's at 27 minutes to the top of the hour, by the way, Monday's programme. Uh, the Richie Allen Show. Good to be with you. Great to have Neil back on the programme. A couple of things I want to get into. One, I don't want to labour this, but I just want to mention, maybe there's a lot of boasting going on in, t in terms of People were sick of the Clintons. They were sick of the Bushes. They were sick of yeah. these dynasties. This reality well, television star came along. Maybe they were pushing at an open door. That's question number one. <coughs> and question yes. number two, and it's about getting to people on online. I can see where you're coming from here because <coughs> we've, we've lamented on this programme. I know you've lamented in the past that social media has become this kind of narcissistic echo chamber. People tend to surround themselves with others who agree with them on basically everything. They seek, you know, refuge from any sort of criticism or any sort of argument. And I suppose because we've allowed ourselves to become like that, I know you've talked a lot about this over the years, we, I suppose, we're wide open to being manipulated in the way that you're talking about Cambridge Analytica doing. So there's kind of two things there. One, I, I, it's not that I don't want to give them credit for Brexit and Trump. Right. I think people were leaning that way anyway. And well, two, well, how much is the narcissism the playing into it? Here, here's the thing, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, well, I, I'll get to both of those. Right, here's the thing. They, Trump was dying on his ass, right, okay? If you look at the, uh, 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 originally, Trump was dying. He was doing no good at all. Ted Cruz was 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 outperforming him. Now, what happened, and this was shown by in, in the WikiLeaks dump, um, that basically the DNC seized on this, and they paid hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars making counter adverts promoting Donald Trump as the prospective candidate for the Republicans. The reason for this was that they felt that they could win, right? What they did was they gifted Cambridge Analytica with a huge amount of completely free advertising for, Ron, uh, for Donald Trump, at which point, basically, as you say, people were pushing against an open door. They underestimated how much the Clintons were hated and how popular Donald Trump was. At that point, Cambridge Analytica and Robert Mercer dropped Ted Cruz like a hot turd and moved all their money and all their expertise and Steve Bannon and Kellyanne Conway over to the Trump and Paul Manafort over to the Trump campaign. And Roger Stone is connected to this somehow as well, though I don't exactly understand why. Although basically through Paul Manafort, he, Black Manafort and, uh, and Stone, they created the super PAC. So basically that's 
probably how they're involved by basically lobbying a huge firms that again wanted this particular candidate because they felt that he could be manipulated. Was there and a change, I, Neil? Sorry to interrupt you. Was there a noticeable change in Trump's demeanor and the things that Trump was saying? There was a noticeable change in the, in the finance. Do you know how much Trump personally put into his campaign? I don't, but I wouldn't imagine it's very much. It was less than that. It was zero. Right. Right, which leads me to believe he didn't want to win. Do you know how much, like, uh, uh, now Robert Mercer put millions into uh, into his campaign, which leads me to believe that Robert Mercer and Steve Bannon wanted Trump to win because they felt that they could manipulate him. Now, I don't actually think that he's been what they wanted. I don't think he's been controllable in the way that, that they, they felt that he would be. I think that they basically probably used him to get the, the tax cut for businesses because basically Mercer's connected to Renaissance Technologies, which is one of the largest hedge fund operations in the world. So that's what I th I don't know exactly what his point is, but I'll guarantee yeah. that he's making some money out of Brexit. He's making some money out of the chaos in this, and he's, ma he's trying to make some money out and, and some uh, ideological change uh, in, in America. There is a counter-argument, Neil. There is a counter-argument to the claim that Trump wasn't you know, it wasn't possible to manipulate him. We've seen Trump reverse himself on, on a couple of very important things. I mean, yeah. I, I, I know as a journalist, I've known about Donald Trump for many, many, many years. And Trump was consistent for years in his criticism of American interventionism. What we've yep. seen is Trump going full out for interventionism. We've seen Trump do, you know, I... We've been speaking about this earlier in the first hour of the program. Trump has kind of gone full scale Zionist. You know, yes, let's have the embassy in Jerusalem. Um, yes, um, to whatever Benjamin Netanyahu and the uh, Israeli government wants. I would say that the evidence is that Trump has been, you know, he's been pretty easy to manipulate. Looking from from, from my point of view. Uh, no, no I, I don't doubt that again. What, what I meant is manipulated towards the particular ideology yeah. that um, that Robert Mercer, uh, Steve Bannon and um, um, uh, William Rosemary keen on, which is essentially a far right uh, white supremacist uh, ideology. Um, and now, now to go to your second point, we'll, we'll come back to that, I promise. But to go to your second point. <clears throat> Uh, about the use of narcissism and such like that and the way that we're, we're manipulated. This is what initially sort of like drew me to this because the second I heard about Cambridge Analytica and the things that they were doing, I was like, well, they're JTRIG operations. They're GCHQ and Pentagon operations. Like, for example, there was a, we spoke about this last time, the, the Eglin Air Force Base. Yeah. Like, the, the, there is, there is a, a campaign of, of misdirection and misinformation to control and direct social media arguments from the US Pentagon that came out of Eglin Air Force Base. And at one point, the majority of, uh, of posts on, on Reddit um, were from this particular um, thing, JTRIG uses sock puppet accounts and, and fake gurus and that type of thing. So once you know the sort of connections to Marconi Defense and all the various sort of intelligence agencies, and then you see the similarities in the programs that were running to JTRIG, um, uh, then you go, oh, right, okay, well, this is, again, this is some sort of an extension of government, isn't it? This is some yeah. sort of uh, extension of some sort of government govern manipulation uh, technique. So, yes, they very much played on, on people's narcissi uh, narcissism, but not just narcissism, the sort of the belonging that it gives. Identity it, politics it, it, is on the rise, yeah. isn't it? This is identity uh, politics writ large. It's never yeah. been bigger than it is now. We identify with a social group. We derive our opinions more and more than ever I think from that group whatever it is and um, we come to loathe um, those who criticise any of those values because we think that we're personally being criticised. We have become screaming narcissists who seek refuge in the echo chamber of social media and I think everything you've done and I've been, you, since, I, since I was introduced to your work, Neil, which I absolutely endorse, it's fantastic, and I'm really into this, I can see how people are wide open now to this sort of manipulation. Well, first, thank you very much. Um, yeah. But yes, a a absolutely, man. Like, this is the point, but it's not, the, it's not people's fault. It's the way that, that, that social media is, is presented. The, it's causing you trauma the longer you're on it because you're isolated, you're overstimulated, um, and you're alone, 
but you've got an audience. And so your brain's going in all sorts of different ways trying to make the best outcome for you. And the very best outcome that you can get on social media is a kind of dopamine hit in the same way that you'll get from gambling, yeah. where somebody's response will basically like you know, make you feel good and make you feel include, included, <laughs> excuse me, and, um, and, um, and light up those, those, those little fireworks inside your brain for a second. Uh, the problem is that basically in order to do this, um, you might alter your particular behavior, particularly if you haven't got the sort of embarrassment of sort of doing or saying something face to face. Or um, if, you know, a lot of people go, oh, it's only online, I've got a persona and stuff like that. Before you know it, you're in a group um, and you're being given a lot of information that sounds plausible on the face of it, but is actually propaganda. It's, and I yeah. think that that has, has happened a, a huge amount as well. I think that there's there's a huge amount of stuff online that's just not true. Well, here's the um, question now. On that, here's the question from Charlotte in Burnley. Uh, good evening, Charlotte. Share Blue and Media Matters are the social media manipulators of the Democrats and they infiltrate Reddit and vote VOAT with their narrative. Now, she makes a brilliant point, and again, this is a question that I would have asked you. Who's to say that, let's call them liberals or progressives, that they don't have the big machines, uh, you know, in, in the shadows like Cambridge Analytica doing the very same thing? They may well do, but uh, I haven't seen any evidence of it not as, yet, as, not yet. as of, of yet, you know. Uh, we can't, you know, crimes we know nothing about are going up all the time as well. Yeah. And, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, I, she makes a very good point, and I don't doubt it. Um, but again, I, I, I just think that the whole thing is a, uh, is, is a, a bit of a joke. I'm, I'm with you. I don't trust any point of democracy, but I think that this is really sinister, sort of like, because it's manipulating people to believe that they're making a conscious choice. Um, and they're not. And of course, you're apolitical. This is why, you know, I, I could listen to you all night because you're apolitical. Neil Sanders, folks. And of course, you will have, you will have the, the, um, the triggered. There's always the triggered. They listen to five minutes of this and they'll assume or they'll believe that Neil was a Hillary supporter and all that old garbage. This is what it's driving us to, by the way. My well, absolutely. Isn't it? It's madness. This whataboutery bollocks. Excuse you can my hate language. everybody. Can't, can't we all just come together and hate everyone? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. You know, I was speaking to Hayden Hewitt about this earlier on, Live Leak, and he said it's absolutely extraordinary that we've evolved to this where somebody can't say what you were saying, which um, has a lot of authenticity to it about this company, Cambridge Analytica, and what it tried to do. Oh, well, Sanders, well, sure, he must be a, he must be a Hillary supporter. No, it's nonsense. He's apolitical. He's talking about how the system has been and can be manipulated regardless of which um, side you're on. But it appears well, in this case that this particular <coughs> company tried its damnedest to, um, to help um, the Donald along. But I'm yeah. sure there were other interests helping the Don along as well, including his friends uh, in Israeli intelligence, because everything he's doing now um, suits... And this is not blame the Jews for everything, by the way, or anything like it. But, um, you know, the Zionists love Donald. But it's, it's, it's mad <coughs> stuff. Do you know what, Neil? Listening to you, I'm thinking, where the feck... How do people get out of this? How do you extricate yourself from this madness? Well, uh, I suppose you, it, it, it's all about looking at sources and stuff like that. I mean, what, just to sort of tie it back again. Right, two points, right, okay. One, a lot of people have accused me of being a bit of a lefty at the minute. Like, <laughs> right. that's because we have a right-wing government yeah. in the UK and America. Put a left-wing government in and I'll have a go at them, right, okay. But at the minute, they're toothless, okay. So that's why I'm having a go at the right-wing uh, for two reasons. One, because basically they're the people making policy. And two, because of, again, to tie it back to what we were talking about, Robert Mercer and William Reginery. Robert Mercer also owns Breitbart. Uh, he's the chief sponsor of uh, Milo Yiannopoulos and Steve Bannon. Uh, we've talked about their nefarious yeah. uh, connections to people like Mark Collins, Rector, and stuff like that. He also sponsors Nigel Farage, and they opened Breitbart UK specifically to help UKIP. Uh, and then he paid um, uh, for the Trump campaign. As soon as um, all this nonsense, uh, this um, uh, Russia um, stuff uh, started coming down, Mercer put in $200,000 into um, Trump campaign's legal fund, which was immediately transferred 
um, out uh, to the lawyers. That's the first time in history that a, a sitting president has ever paid for a private legal uh, um, thing with campaign funds, and it was paid for by Robert Mercer. Robert Mercer yearns for an all-white utopia. He thinks that the civil rights movement was a mistake, and there's no such thing as racism against black people. The other person that's very, very interesting, and basically the point is that he he created and, and feeds Breitbart. Now, recently, you've seen Infowars, Drudge Report, Zero Hedge, um, and all these sharing Breitbart stories. They've basically become this sort of node. They you have, saw yeah. a massive shift in Infowars to, to extreme right-wing politics and anti-Islam and stuff like that. When Cambridge Analytica came out the other day, uh, Alex Jones tried to play it off as Steve Bannon trying to get a mailing list for for conservatives and completely ignored the connection to Robert Mercer. I suspect that he's trying to, or at least, or perhaps did, get an injection of cash from Robert Mercer. Uh, that would make perfect sense to me. The other really troubling um, uh, person is William Rosary II, and he's basically the financier of the Charles Martel Society and the N uh, MPI, the National Policy Institute. And these, he's, again, white supremacist, yearns for an all-white utopia uh, in America. Um, and basically, he sponsors Richard Spencer through these organizations. Richard Spencer is the gentleman that basically um, uh, created the phrase alt-right. So when you look, uh, for example, um, the Unite the Right march uh, where that woman was killed in Charlottesville, uh, that was arranged by Richard Spencer and another gentleman at Trump Tower and Nigel Farage just happened to be in the building at the time. And, and again, this all reminds me of things like Combat 18 uh, and the utilisation of Special Branch and, and Operation Gladio. Do you know what I mean? These always right-wing organisations and then they actually sort of blame the left-wing, which is actually what you're seeing with this sort of projection on Antifa. Are there idiots on the left? Yes. Are there evil people on the left? Yes, absolutely. But at the minute, I think that a lot of that is used as agitprop as a way to justify a lot of the uh, far-right propaganda that is peddled as alternative media uh, and put out via those particular um, organisations that, that I, I just spoke about. Who benefits then? You see, because I, I, I lamented... Robert Mercer. But ultimately, who benefits? You know... Robert Mercer and these rich far-right elitists like William Regnery. I mean, this is the other point. You're seeing this nonsense at the minute, basically, like on the Infowars. Uh, oh, the CIA and the communist Chinese globalists. First off, globalization is a capitalist venture. So communism and globalization are, are basically uh, diametrically opposed. As yeah, far it's as an oxymoron, standard. yeah. But, um, yeah, quite. Uh, and, um, and secondly, the CIA was founded by the Dulles brothers through Skull and Bones. They worked, they were financiers for Nazi Germany, Weimar Germany, right? Okay, they, they have very strong connections to the Nazis. For a long time, we used to talk about that and, and Robert Pearl and uh, his connections to the, uh, the Nazis. And um, oh, what was the other guy whose father was a Gauleiter and the Bush's connections to, um, um, uh, Prescott Bush's connections connections to, to financing Hitler through Standard Oil and, uh, and uh, Brown Brothers Harriman and such, such yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I was very aware that there was an element within the elites that had this this um, hark back to, to Nazi Germany. We've seen the Queen uh, high hailing and stuff like that. Uh, but for some reason, that particular element has been sort of like cast aside recently. And uh, if, if I'm right about who's pumping money into stuff, then that's because basically it's a bit of a soft sell propaganda. Again, just to reiterate, doesn't mean that there aren't gits on the left, doesn't mean that communism is good, doesn't mean any of this. It just means that, can we look at this fact that we've uncovered before we start, we, before we go into whataboutisms? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and and I, I had a great conversation today with, um, as, as I mentioned already, with my mate Hayden about this. Ultimately, I talk, and I've been talking for years, about financial elites. This is not a Jewish conspiracy. We're talking about the controllers of private central banks that in effect own countries by through fractional reserve banking and lending. Um, this is the greatest conspiracy in the world. No politician in the world will talk about it. And ultimately, when people are played off against each other like this, left against right, alt-right against left, fascism, Antifa, all of that, these are the people that benefit because we don't collectively then begin to have a look at the paradigm. We never look yep. at the paradigm. And ultimately, this is, this is the problem. That's what I meant by who benefits. And I really believe that we get wrapped up in Sheldon Adelson and George Soros and Mercer and everybody else. They're all puppets of private central banking. They are. 
That's in my opinion. That you know that is a fact. We were condemned. I mean, Corbyn supporters today. You know, you had Paul Mason, the Economist, and you know <coughs> everybody wants to believe in Corbyn, and they want to believe that social justice will prevail if Corbyn gets in. You've got Paul Mason saying. Corbyn has been accused of anti-Semitism and racism because in the future he'll bring social justice and all of this. And I tweeted to Mason and I said, that's monumental bollocks. What Corbyn yep. will do is more of the same. He will borrow billions from central banks, putting us more and more and more in debt so that in the future another right-wing government will come in and force <coughs> austerity on people to pay all of that back. It's a never-ending cycle of madness. And while we're killing one another... Breitbart and Media Matters for America and all of that will never have a look at the paradigm and why we live in this lunatic way that we live, Neil. We've got about mm. two, two and a half minutes left. That's been my take on it. It might sound a bit simplistic, but it's a bit more complicated than that. We've got about two and a half minutes. I'm going to give <coughs> you the final word, but before that, I can't recommend highly enough, folks, that you check out Your Thoughts Are Not Your Own and Neil's other books. <coughs> Now's the only thing that's real, which is his take on the Manson murders. You'll find uh, these books at his website, neilsandersmindcontrol.com. Do check it out. Final word on it, mate. Um, brilliant research into the men, mostly men, that are that are around this firm, Cambridge Analytica, their connections, I mean, they're connected up to uh, the Wazoo. It's excellent work, it really is. I don't have time to do it on my own. I depend on researchers like you to do this work. Brilliant work. I'm going to give you the final word on this. Where is it all going to end, Neil? Well, I mean, the other connection that we didn't quite get into, but I would suggest people look into, is uh, groups like Palantir uh, and technologies like Trapwire and, and what the whole point of this is. This is, this is I don't think this has been exposed, basically, to normalise it. There's nothing that's going to get done about it. It's getting you used to the idea that all your, your data is used all the time. But yeah. with things like Trapwire, they're going to they're gonna monitor you. We're talking about a total control grid where, basically, every aspect of your existence is monitored, watched. This is the 1980s that people have been talking about and these companies are boasting about it they're talking about pre-crime they're talking about um, you know mass behavior modification uh, in countries all over the world okay and th this is real this is a real thing uh, and, the, and as I say these companies are, are actively boasting about it they're bragging about it it's incredible isn't it and you know I just want to make one uh, uh, one more point I think it's it's an important one to reiterate what Neil has done himself the information that he's found and that he's shared with us and he shared with me is accurate. And why that information is not contained in the articles of Carol Cadwallader, that's a brilliant question, that. You know, mm. because she should have been able to answer Isabel Oakeshott of the Daily Mail on Sunday on the Andrew Marr show when Oakeshott said, well, it's a lot of footsteps, basically, a lot of, you know, circumstantial evidence and claims. And she must have that information that Neil, you would imagine so. I'm not saying that Neil is any run-of-the-mill researcher. He isn't. He's far better than that. But she has access to uh, assistants and co-researchers. They should have been able to find out who this firm, Cambridge Analytica, uh, really is. Mate, do us a favour. Uh, come back sooner. It's been ages since you are. I'd like to have you back on a bit oh, more regularly. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Because, yeah, I'd love to, Richie. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, genuinely mean that. It's great to have you on, Neil. Thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks for that research. It's excellent. Neil Sanders, mindcontrol.com. Look forward to the next time, Neil. Thanks again, mate. No, thank you very much. Brilliant stuff. Neil Sanders, mindcontrol.com. Check out that website and uh, check out his books.